Woo! We did it. I don't know if you saw it, and if not, please go watch it. I spent literally days on this project for you uh, to show that you can do stuff like this in your kitchen with little to no gear. And I'm proud of it. It's got, getting a lot of love. I'd like it to get more. And uh, I've even done a little here, a little YouTube shorts for it, which has not made it onto shorts shelf yet. So I don't know how to do that, but I'm trying. This video, it killed me. It literally nearly ended me. I was so close to pulling the plug numerous times. The computer was struggling so, so much. And it's not even an old machine. It's a, a two-year-old MacBook Pro, fully specced. That bit, 11 seconds, just no camera moves. It took about four hours to render out. And ah, uh, ah. Uh, lesson learned is probably I should learn After Effects. I think that might have solved a lot of the issues with what I faced, but I don't like After Effects and I'm always trying to find a workaround so I don't have to use it. Basically, you wanna know why did this video kill me? Well, it was the animation part. It was the time it took to render out and it was <laughs> also understanding keyframes inside Premiere. I am I know what, you know, ease in and ease out and Bezier does, but when you're trying to do a fluid motion going around a scene, like with sweeping curves and stuff. Continuous Bezier, Bezier, Auto Bezier, Linear, I don't know. <laughs> so I was messing around with a load of different options and in the end it came out okay. Another cool thing about this video was I got to show one of my little tips that I did from a video a few weeks ago where I did the my camera settings in two minutes. That video used a similar technique to this where I used my computer screen as a background. It's it's a really good idea. And honestly, I think I need to do a video on that because that in itself is gold. To be able to do any color on screen and change it live with something else moving, that is, that gets, doesn't that get your mind thinking, what can I do then? Other than using lights, how can you do a gradient color? You may think, just do a green screen. All right, well, answer me this then with green screen. Can you, let's say we've got a glass of liquid, yeah? But let's say this liquid is, I don't know, orange. Let's say it's Lucozade. If you were to put a green screen behind that, then what color does the, uh, the Lucozade become? A pretty gross brown, probably? And then once you've changed the color of the green screen or, you know, masked it out, keyed it out, whatever, ultra key, and then you put your own background color in, um, the liquid is still gonna have the same baked in color from the green screen. The same with color cast on skin, really hard to correct that nicely on budget for green screen. Whereas if I was to put my hand near there, I'm getting the automatic color of whatever the background is on my hand, you know? Does that make sense? It's basically real, so there's no faking it. Hmm. This video just goes to show that you can create something pretty cool inside your kitchen. So go do that. <laughs> All it needs is a little idea inside here. And uh, as you saw in the video, just jot it down on paper and then just tackle it step by step. I didn't know how I was gonna animate that video from the start. I just knew in my head what the finished item could look like and it was very close actually. I feel like this video, I put my all into it and I couldn't have done any more to kind of show this is what I do, this is what I'm about. I was dreaming of it. I was just talking to my wife constantly about it. She was losing her patience. Even my son ended up watching the fire dancers at a very early stage and got into the groove of the Chinookan tribe. Everyone got involved, regardless if they wanted to or not. I'm so glad it's over. It feels like a breath of fresh air now that's gone. Here we are again on another upload where I'm just talking to the camera. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't do that sort of thing every week when I've got other work to do. Maybe in the future when this becomes more of a solid thing, hopefully, then I would like to do a lot more of what, you know, Daniel Schiffer, those sort of people do where they, Austin Paul, just do commercials all the time. And uh, if you haven't checked out either of those channels, 
do it. They're really good. Daniel Schiffer, if you haven't seen the video yet and you're watching this by some random chance, please go check out my video. People are kind of saying it's something like you might like or you could do or you couldn't do. Um, I'm sure he could do that. He's very talented. Wouldn't it be great if a YouTuber like that would watch small YouTubers creations? Those that have watched it, thank you. And thank you for the support. Massive, massive thanks to Ed Lawrence and Josh Gudjian for their continued support on me and uh, my channel and always there for kind of giving me advice and encouragement because of those two guys. Here we have the finished thing. And I'm so glad it's over. But it's certainly just beginning. I've already, let's open this now in front of you. I've already set myself a disgusting challenge. I went to a garden center and I purchased a wee little drummer boy. This guy, we are gonna turn into a Christmas advert. Oh God. And it's not gonna be anything like that. I'm gonna try my luck at a emotional John Lewis kind of thing, maybe. I'm putting it out there, so I actually have got to do it now. So if I say it to the world, this means this video has to happen. Please be nice to me. Mwah. Little drummer boy. What should we name him? We'll name him Ed, because Ed shared my video on uh, LinkedIn. And even that has led, led to a few new connections on LinkedIn, who would have thought, which, you know, may turn into work. Ed, the drummer boy, is going to be coming to a screen near you soon, uh, unless I throw my computer out the window because I'm trying something almost impossible again. Maybe keep it simple, because Christmas is soon and I want this out, obviously. Big, big week in the fact that that video went out the same day both my guinea pigs died. This happened yesterday. I did probably what any caring um, owner would do. Didn't think about the safety of themselves and I just rammed my hand inside the jaws of the uh, staffy to try open his jaws away from my dog's neck. And uh, this resulted in a couple of hours at hospital yesterday, just getting it cleaned out. I'll do anything for my little Morris because he's my, my fluffy boy. I hope it never comes to one of those incidents where I have to go in a rough sea to save him because I know most dogs survive that sort of thing, but my gosh, I don't know how you could just stand there and watch and not do anything. Even when I went to put my hands in, the owner of the staff, he said, don't put your hand in. But it was too late. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about getting him off my dog's throat. Thank you for my new subscribers. I really appreciate getting over that 600 mark now, which is great. We're on our way. Whoop, whoop, whoop. To what? I don't know. I just like growing. <laughs> and um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please, why not? These are just almost like a reflection kind of video. So don't base my channel on this. This is just like a, and breathe. But if you like the video that you saw before, or you haven't seen it yet, please go watch it. I think you may like it and you may, you may want to check out the rest of my channel. It's, it's a bit of fun and it'd be great to have you along with me. I've got a bad feeling about this one, I'll be honest. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, bye for now.